So, seriously, can't believe we're here. This place is beautiful. Today, I think I said, you know, already we've seen, called a moose in the 30 yards. Uh, saw a grizzly bear. I've seen four 400 inch caribou. Now a giant ram. Uh, don't know what else we could see other than wolf and wolverine. So we're gonna see if we can't go put this thing on the ground and then we can enjoy the rest of the day. Here we go. We're in White Horse and uh, just got done having dinner with my dude. This is Lauren Storak. How's it going? I feel like a midget right now. He's <laughs> a Lauren's, big, big man. Lauren is the toughest dude I know. In 2017, he guided me in Arctic Red in the Northwest Territories and started this really bad sheep fever deal. Yes. And uh, I'm grateful to him for it. And uh, I love this guy. The sheep bug's a real thing. It's a real thing. You get it, you're hooked. And uh, you know, I told him I've been to Africa, I've been to Spain, been to a few other places, but ever since our hunt together, all I've wanted to do is get back here and he picked us up from the airport and we grabbed some dinner at this fantastic little restaurant in some hotel and now we're getting ready to rock. So awesome way to start the trip. Getting ready to fly from Whitehorse to Dawson. There's all of our gear getting loaded up on the plane. We're not gonna need a coat. Yeah. Here we are climbing off the plane, coming back into the airport because uh, they said the Dawson airport is covered in fog and they cannot land. So we get to sit here for another couple of hours and see what the weather does. And hopefully it clears up because we've got to get there today to get our licenses before the weekend or I'm not exactly sure what we do. So back to hurry and wait. And to be completely honest, I got so many uh, I don't even know what the word is. I'm so freaking excited to be here that I just it's am happy. Anxiety We're just pumped. Overload. Anxiety overload. We got some airplanes sitting out there ready for us, but it feels good. You can smell fall. There's not a hundred million people here. This is the place to be, baby. This is freaking awesome. Finally here in Dawson, we're at uh, Dan Reynolds' house. He has like the most unbelievably beautiful place. He owns all of this that he's cleared for hay. Freaking awesome, such a beautiful place. It is a beautiful day. It's like 75 degrees probably, beautiful, sunny. Are we recording? We're recording. Where are we at? We are at Dan's and the 185. This is all our gear going to base camp. We're packed in here pretty good. Brady fit in the front. I'm my feet are under him and we haven't even gotten to the super cub yet. And this is the legend Dan Reynolds himself. Where? Where's he at? <laughs> Where's he I at? See him? Uh gonna fly out here to base camp here in just a second, put some fuel in and head out. So here we go. quick dinner and getting the super cub fueled up and then Dan says he's gonna fly us out in no man's land so we're getting some fuel put in that super cub it's like unbelievably beautiful here the colors are popping and yellow perfectly calm today it's an awesome awesome day in the mountains I remember how to fly this plane leaving base camp headed out
So this is our camp and this is our cabin and it's flipping awesome. Dan says it's one of the older cabins on the concession. So we got our beds that we're gonna be sleeping on. Our little table, our stove, and then right out our back window, you can see a seriously like <laughs> the most unbelievably beautiful place. Pretty awesome. Sounds like tomorrow morning, we're gonna go up around this ridge, see what we can find up in there. It's the morning of day one on our hunt. Um, just waking up, well, we've been up for a long time. Uh, as you can probably see behind me, we've had some really, really, really bad fog. It's just finally clearing out. Uh, when we woke up this morning at six o'clock, it was socked in. You couldn't see 100 yards. You couldn't see any of the mountains or anything there. Um, anyways, just had breakfast, had some awesome oatmeal. We're gonna get loaded up. And uh, the plan is to go up and around um, that mountain point over there. I guess there's a great big valley around the corner. And we're gonna hike up in there. They say Rams like to hang out in that area. So we're gonna bust up that way and have a big day and see what we can find. And it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. Uh, above the fog, it's clear. There's not a stitch of wind. Um, it was cold last night. I don't know what it got down to, but it was well below freezing. You can see the frost all over the ground. Um, but here we go. Day one of hunting at Dan Reynolds Outfitting in the Yukon. Uh, Spencer Wallace is my guide and we're about to get after it for day one. Spencer the captain. The fog's blown out. Looks like we're gonna have a fantastic day. When the terrain gets super nasty, Brady's fat butt gets out. And Spencer goes to work on the Argo. Just got up on this ridge. Saw these two young bulls. And Spencer started calling and they are coming on a string. These things are like Clydesdale horses on steroids. They are so It's not 35 yards away. So we've been coming up this draw all morning, working our way up and uh, just glassing out. And there's a couple of nice rams. They look like nice rams are a long ways out. They're bedded actually in the flat at the mouth of that big draw. So we're gonna load up our stuff a little bit better and then hike up the river bottom um, all the way up. See if we can't get up on the ridge over here and glass across and see what they are. Get some age on them, see what we're looking at and go from there. We saw a great big grizzly run across that flat down there also. So we're gonna go get after it and Spence is all excited about it too. What do you think Spence? It's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day. It's been a great day. So far day. we called in two moose, one to 30 yards. We've seen four or five, 400 inch caribou. We've now found sheep and saw a grizzly. Wolf and wolverine are next. Wolf and wolverine are next. But let's go kill a big sheep first. Let's go do it. Okay, we found a cranker, found a freaking bomber. What do you, pretty nice ram. <laughs> when the guide looks in the spotting scope and gets excited and says, that's probably the best ram I've seen this year. That's when you get excited. So we're sitting here in the riverbed, 
And he's actually way down here low. He's right up on that green between these bushes, right on that knoll. That's exactly why you come up here. Unbelievable ram. So we're gonna get a game plan. Uh, it is 12.51 p.m. right now. And then we're gonna go up and smoke him. When your guide gets excited, you know it's time to get excited. So we're gonna see if we can't go put this thing on the ground and then we can enjoy the rest of the day. Here we go. Moving up closer. He's clear up on this ridge, like 800 to 1,000 yards right now. We're gonna get up on this side of the creek. Keep moving up and then see if we can't come back around. They're laying right up on that knoll. Got another young ram right up here on that rock slide as well. We're about a thousand out. It's taken a couple hours to get up close. Snuck into 350 yards. I got set up right here with across the bag shooting over this brush. Yeah. What just happened? Killed a dandy. We just put a dandy ram down. Unbelievable day. Can't wait to get up there and see him. Probably one of the best days of hunting ever. Seeing all the game, beautiful weather, beautiful place, big ram. Not sure what else you could ask for. He's using lambs that have been following us all day. My ram is... Spencer just called this moose in from like clear in the bottoms. There's the moose where he started calling from. There's my dead sheep <laughs> and spotting scope and backpacks. This has been like the most ridiculously cool day ever. Hi Spence, let's go. <laughs> Up and over the ridge, baby. Come in light, go out ahead. Just got back to camp after a long day. Unbelievable day. It is right now 11.54 p.m. And we made it. Getting the meat unloaded and uh, get all the stuff put away and then we're going to bed. <laughs> Ready to go to sleep. Unbelievable. Awesome, unreal first day. Got yesterday's dream ram sitting in the skillet this morning for breakfast. Spence has taken awesome care of us. Gonna have some steak for breakfast. And this is the view we look at out of the bedroom window. It's the greatest place ever. And then out this window, we've got probably the best view ever. Sitting right there on top of the shed. Decided to go for a hike and just screw around. And first and foremost, you look out here across this flat and you're like, man, I can be over there in no time. Then you look at what you're actually stepping in. This stuff is the worst. You step like sink every six inches or eight inches, but 
coming across this flat, I just saw something sticking up out across the grass. And I think I may have just found something nice. So I'm gonna hike over here and see what it is that we've got. I am guessing I just found myself a sweet moose paddle shed is what it looks like to me. And ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what that is, is a cool flipping moose shed. Sweet. Well, it looks like my pack just got a little bit heavier to trudge through the tundra. On video to get perspective of things. The moose shed's now on my Kuyu 7800 pack and it covers the entire pack. I'll bet that shed weighs 35 pounds. I don't know, but it's heavy. And it's gonna make walking in this marsh a flipping beat down, but we're gonna go see if we can match them up. It's day two in the Yukon. I've been sitting up here for the last couple of hours um, watching these uh, four or five bulls and five cows, and I don't know what happened, but up the draw about 30 minutes ago, all the sheep started sprinting up the hill, and then these bulls started moving down the draw. And the bull and the five cows that was just a couple hundred yards below me, um, they've actually come all the way down. I don't know that I can even see them anymore. In like no time, they've completely gone out the draw. So, don't know what's going on there, what happened, but... Uh, I don't see any other moose up here other than these two bulls that are now leaving. They're at about 250 yards below me. It's amazing how much ground they can cover so fast. They are huge, strong animals. So I'm probably going to pack up and start hiking back towards camp and follow these moose out and see what happens. It's the morning of day three. Um, you can probably tell, but we've had some thick fogs, fog come in. There started raining. Forecast the next two and three days calls for heavy wind and heavy rain. But uh, we're going to go out and see if we can find some moose. We saw several good bulls last night. But nothing over that 60 plus inch mark that we're really looking for. So we're going to head out a couple miles and start glassing through the fog and see what we can find and hopefully turn something good up. We got a deep creek to get her across to here. Super pretty, but we gotta find a spot that we can cross so we don't end up to our flipping waste. The rain's died off, and now you can just see the fog kind of sitting down. We've got a couple of bulls, one really nice bull in here. So we're gonna go look over these other hills and see what else we can find. We just looked at a bull that we think is in his 60s. Wide, long points. Only has two and three on his fronts. Uh, I'd probably shoot him. Um, if it wasn't day three or morning of day three, we're gonna hike out here and glass this big bottom for a few hours and just see what we can turn up and then go from there. The rain's let up obviously and it feels really nice, so just making progress. But just FYI to everyone at home, this tundra sucks to walk in. It looks like it's just east smooth sailing, but every step you bury yourself. So, anyways, let's see what we can find. Having an awesome time.
down, baby. Well, I can't see very well at the side of my eyes, but uh, this is my Alaska Yukon moose uh, with Dan Reynolds outfitting. Um, Spencer Wallace is my guide and has been unbelievable. Um, it's been an unbelievable hunt. We shot a uh, an unbelievable ram on day one. Um, really pretty ram, kind of my dream ram. And then uh, yesterday took care of him and then from camp started looking for moose. Um, we saw, we passed on or saw six or seven smaller bulls yesterday. Um, woke up this morning and this bull had moved in. Um, honestly, we looked at him and actually passed him this morning. Um, weren't sure if we were gonna shoot him. Uh, this afternoon we went for a walk and ended up getting within 75 yards of him and got to watch him wait, rake trees and um, there was another small bull that was with him, or not small, but smaller. Um, and we got to watch them interact, which was awesome. Uh, decided that uh, with the situation and where we were at with other hunters and things that uh, we probably should shoot him, so we shot him. He's grown on us, he's an awesome bull, 65 inches wide. Um, my first moose, it's unbelievable how big these things are. but. Uh, an unbelievable experience. It's only day three of our hunt, so we're gonna take some time and get this thing cleaned up and enjoy the next couple of days and then maybe go look for a, a grizzly or uh, some wolves. But uh, awesome time, Spencer. You've done a fantastic job and I'm sure grateful for it. We were up till, uh, we didn't get back to camp last night till one o'clock in the morning, um, working on this moose, and now we're back. Um, we've got a ton of work to do. Got to get it cleaned up, got to get the head caped out, got to get it all back. Um, it's going to be a long, long day, um, but an awesome day. So here we go. We'll keep you posted. I'm walking with the last load on my moose, and uh, I'm walking up the river because it's the only freaking place that I'm not getting stuck with the horns sticking out. Beautiful, awesome moose. This trip's been unbelievable. Still have a week left. Only tags I've left in my pocket are bear and wolf. I guess wolverine if the stars align. Uh, so, gonna be pretty slow and easy going. My buddy Mergs um, had to sit in base camp for four days or three days uh, because they couldn't get him into where they wanted to because the weather was too crappy. And he's finally out this morning after the sixth attempt to get him out there hunting. So I'm excited for him and hope he kills a giant ram. Uh, it's a good day. It's beautiful today. There's supposed to be a big storm front that blows in tonight. And uh, it's supposed to rain really heavy tonight and tomorrow. So. We'll see what that does and how it looks, but uh, awesome, awesome, awesome day. So, I'm walking up my creek right here and catching fish with my bare hands. Oh, oh, oh! There he goes. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of, I believe they're called char, arctic char, uh, in this creek. And it is like so beautiful up here, it's crazy. It's not really easy hiking or walking, but I'm just going right up the creek because I don't want to get eaten by a bear. In this thick crap that you can't see anything. I'm sure in the next 100 yards or so I'll find another big spring, but um, there's about 12 or 15 sheep that are just up over this ridge from me. Let's see if I can't go get some pictures and things of them. Um, it looks like they're all using lambs, but just up exploring, seeing if we can't find a big grizzly or a wolf sneaking around. And if not, 
we're having fun just enjoying a nice day and putting on a few miles. How you can see that this storm is blowing in and uh, it's starting to look pretty crappy down the valley. There's some real dark clouds. Camp is down in the sun down there. So I've managed to be get myself clear up here and we need to get going back. So it's getting cold. It's probably dropped 20 degrees. I'm sweaty. I'm kind of a miserable spot right now, but it's beautiful. Got a creek running off the mountain here. So I'm gonna pick my crap up and head back down. It's day six, morning of day six, and we're waiting for Dan to come and pick us up um, to fly us over to another camp in hopes of finding a grizzly and maybe a wolf or two. See if we can't go find something big. No more hiking, right Amanda? <laughs> We're done hiking. Forget that. If there's somebody you really hate in your life, get them a heavy backpack and have them come walk across the tundra on the hummocks if you hate them. Because it sucks. All I can say, all I can say is, Un freaking believable This morning we got up early and a week or so ago some hunters were in this camp and shot a grizzly and Spence has been telling me all week how wolves really like grizzly. Well on the top of my trophy list in the world a wolf is right up there close to the top and this morning we we checked it last night didn't see anything on it this morning, we uh, got up early and crawled up over this edge. Couldn't see anything. The bear carcass is down in a little bit of a depression. Um, snuck forward and all of a sudden Spence goes, there's one right there. And I looked out and there was this pure white wolf running across the tundra up towards the pines. And I didn't know what to do. I heard and got my uh, bipod extended. Uh, so I could try and find a way to shoot and then Amanda said there's another one and uh, we looked over and there was another one running from our left to our right and so we uh, there was no time and Spencer said shoot the white one so I hurried and got down on it they both Spencer and Amanda started to howl and uh, it stopped the white wolf and I had no idea how far it was it was a long ways so I put my, my crosshairs about six or eight inches above its back and shot and flip and dumped it, baby. I just dumped an almost pure white wolf in the Yukon on day six of our hunt. This thing just keeps getting better and better. Almost 40 inch ram, 66 inch moose, and now the apex predator, a pure white wolf. So. We're gonna come up here and get it picked up and take some pictures and see what we've got. This is where we came and poked over. Uh, the grizzly carcass is just out here in the flat. 
I don't know if you can see it, but way out there, somewhere right there, is Spence and Amanda, and to the right of them lays my wolf. So I shot it laying from about right here as it ran across. Uh, we ended up ranging at 375 yards. Then the second one took off this way, and I tried to shoot it on a free hand as it was running. Spencer thought I hit it, but we think we ended up missing. It was probably, I don't know, 250 on a dead run. So just a total prayer, but this is where I shot my wolf. Something I've always wanted to do and never really thought it might happen, but uh, magic keeps happening with Reynolds Outfitting and right there in the middle of the screen lays my pure white Yukon wolf. Like the bloopers 101. <laughs> Reynolds outfitting 2019 bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ultimate setup. <laughs> oh. Oh. I got this guys. <laughs> White wolf down, baby. September 10th, uh, 2019, with Reynolds Outfitting. Um, just back here at Dan's house, you can see that uh, it was a pretty awesome hunt. Uh, on day one, was able to take a 39 inch, uh, 13 inch base uh, ram, 12 years old. Really pretty, kind of the ram I've always dreamed of. On day four, I was able to shoot this 66 inch bull. Um, awesome mass, long pretty points. Uh, just a great animal. And then on day six or seven, I was able to shoot this white wolf, which has kind of been a top of the bucket list animal for me forever. And so, unbelievable hunt, unbelievable experience. I'm grateful for Dan and for Spencer, my guide, uh, for making such an awesome experience for me. This is something that I'll never forget and uh, can't wait to get back. The Yukon's a beautiful place. The weather was perfect. Fall leaves were unbelievable. I mean, we had everything just right. So grateful for the opportunity and uh, unbelievable hunt. It was a hunt of a lifetime. Thanks, Dan.